I, it's Nim here. This is my basic white sourdough recipe. And also I'm showing you the spelt dough as a comparison. At first you have to make levant. You feed same amount of starter, water and flour. This one doubled in size after four hours and bubbly. The aroma is nice and sweet. 375 gram of water. 100 gram of levan. Flour, 500 gram. I use white baker's flour with 13% protein content. 10 gram of salt. I mixed everything together into a shaggy mass. But you have to make sure there's no dry flour left into this step. You need to cover them so that they don't dry out. I left them about half an hour. Look at this. Gluten's already developed. Look. I just roughly mix it. As, as you can see, it's quite shaggy still. I can still feel like, all the lumps. So what I'm going to do is now I'm just gonna smooth them. I just want to get rid of all the lumps. You can see it's already, see? This is the gluten. It's incredible. Just keep kneading a bit more. I think I'm happy with this. I don't feel anything lumpy. It's quite smooth. So. Use a straight sided clear container so you know where the dough is to start with. I just wet it. I don't spray but many people spray oil. But um, by the time I put it in here, this is not such a sticky dough so when I lift up it normally doesn't stick. Just push it down. I've already got a line because this is what I use for one kilogram dough. So that's the line. Spelt. I reduced the hydration rate to 70%. The one earlier with the premium white was 75%. I'd say that's the basic one. And you can increase, you know, um, 80 is fine. You can take 80%. But spelt, you just have to be careful with the water. Uh, see, it's really wet already. Just to make it clear, spelt does have gluten, but it's got different properties. So if you stretch it, it'll break. So it doesn't bounce back like uh, normal gluten in modern wheat. So if you keep kneading, the strands will keep breaking so you will never get the structure but when that happens you can just let it rest it's, it's wet you just have to be very gentle but oh it's a nice gluten structure already i just want to make sure it's smooth i can still feel the uh, salt granules so i just go in and Easy. But yeah, it's breaking already. It's 
super soft. It feels more spongy. I don't feel it's just bouncy. not as smooth and like elastic that. as the uh, normal yeah. window. Structure. As soon as I cannot feel yeah, the salt granules, I will stop needing. There's not much resistance. So I have to go very easy. Rather than pulling all the way, I just stop it there. But you can see, it's actually a very nice door already. I think I'm happy with that. So that's all I'm gonna handle. Whenever it's sticky, just wet your hand. been 30 minutes stretch and fold stretch and fold stretch and fold with my hand every time that's it see already it's not really sticky yes Seven point nine, eighty-two point two Fahrenheit. This was cooler earlier. You know why? Because I had this flower in the fridge. Oh look! You can see this gluten structure. It's beautiful. So, any kind of grind. It's very high in protein, but it's got very different protein structure. Best not to handle too much. So I'm very happy with that. Look how tall it is. 26.8 and 80.2. You can see the dough is quite smooth already. So at this stage, I'm thinking, I probably don't need a third stretch and fold. This is a spelt dough. And as you can see, it stretches long, it's quite floppy. It's a lot softer dough. Twenty seven point two eighty point nine or twenty seven point eight eighty two. Second and last oil. I don't want to touch it anymore. It's already so so gassy. It's like so soft and beautiful. It's so light. I'm quite happy with the gluten structure at this stage. So I will just leave them on bench top and let them rise. How much you wanna let the dough rise is such a personal thing. I mean, to me, 50%, sometimes 60%, somewhere around that is the sweet spot. So you just have to experiment and see what you like. 
depending on how much you take the proof into, you will get the different crumb. But one thing I can tell you though, um, if you start looking at the clock and counting the time, you tend to underproof. So it's best to use a straight sided clear container and mark the starting line and uh, measure exactly how much the door rises. Of course, there are visual clues like bubbly, jiggly door with a dome the top and so on, but it's best to rely on the container. Okay, let's move on to pre shaping. I wet my hands and the door scraper, but I want friction so I do not wet the bench top. I bring all the sides into the center and flip over. Now the top part is going to be the top of the dough. So I'm just trying to create as much surface tension as possible. And this is the spelt dough. Same thing again, I bring all the corners into the center and I flip and I'm pushing, turning, creating the surface tension and I let it rest until I shake. I waited about 20 minutes for the door to relax. I don't really time it because um, the door will visually relax and you don't want to touch when it's really tense because it, you might rip the surface and once the door is relaxed it's uh, a lot easier to maneuver. There are many different ways to shape and uh, it's such a personal thing and um, I'm just doing one way here. And again, it's all about creating surface tension. I like using wood pulp bonneton. They're made in Germany, apparently used by professional bakers. And uh, if you use rice flour and uh, this bonneton, dough doesn't stick to the bonneton. They always come out very cleanly. And another thing is that uh, it creates lovely thin skin and it makes it a lot easier for me to score. And as you know, I like decorative scoring. I didn't include any scoring clip in this video. It just got too long. But if you go into my Instagram account, you'll be able to see the scoring reels. There are so many of them. And also I posted some on YouTube. I'm just pinching both sides so that uh, I can close the seam and I'm pushing to create more surface tension on the top and I sprinkle a bit more rice flour and uh, put that into the bonneton. And this one is spelt. I just show you another way to uh, shape. And uh, this is a little bit easier. I don't find it that much difference in terms of how they bake up, but um, probably the earlier scoring, I get the bigger belly because I'm pulling the doors and creating more tension. Not sure, but still, this one's uh, perfectly fine. I seriously don't see that much difference at all. This is uh, another wood pulp bonneton, but uh, with a uh, ruffle pattern, and uh, it's really pretty. And this is called stitching. It's supposed to create more surface tension and uh, helps scoring later. And some people don't do it, and uh, some bakers seem to get angry when I'm fiddling around with those doors. But uh, 
you know, I'm a home baker. I'm doing only one at a time, two at a time. So, um, yeah, I want to perfect every single dough. But I'll fast forward because it's annoying. Done. Then I simply cover them with tea towels and uh, put them straight into the fridge. Just to double check, I did a quick hawk test. My fridge is very cold. So during the cold retardation, the dough doesn't rise. And finally, this is how they baked. Thanks for watching. And I'm Nim. My Instagram handle is NimSim. Thank you.